Hello and welcome back. Guess what? We have to continue with our basic rhino exploration. It's actually not that basic anymore. I would say it's now advanced beginners because we moved from points to lines, curves, curve tools. So how to modify curves. First, how to create curves, then how to modify them. Then we moved on to some other stuff, uh, few ports, I think. And then we looked into surfaces, how to create surfaces. And the next step now is how to modify surfaces, you know, how to trim stuff out and so on. And there are surfaces and there are solids. Solids are basically closed poly surfaces. If you want to, if you haven't seen any of my videos, maybe you want to check out the, the playlist. So there's a playlist where we go from, uh, from the very basics to this episode here. So this is the playlist. So it starts actually here's, I had a bit of a naming issue at the beginning. I will, I might revise that, but we started with the overview. Uh, we looked at points, navigation and points, part two, line tools, curves, curves and grasshopper. So I showed some grasshopper, but I think grasshopper is its own chapter where we, uh, we looked at rectangles, polygons, stars, and so on. This was all still, although we built some surfaces, this was all still uh, uh, basically curves, curves and stuff. Then we looked at modifying curves, um, fillet and blend curves in Rhino, control points. Um, then we looked at a simple, how to create surfaces from curves with the Boolean tool. That's, that's a very uh, important lesson. That's, a lot of people overlook the, boole the curved boolean tool. Uh, we looked at display modes, then we start to build a simple house, which was kind of, well, it shows you all the tools, but it was not that great. I didn't like the house. So we might come back to it. And then we continued a, a bit further with basic materials, uh, simple geometry, and then now we add surface creation tools, more surface creation tools, basically covering whatever was left from the surface creation tools. And now we will look into the next bit. So if you go here, so we have the basic um, selection tool, points, lines, and so on. And then we were here, surface, surfaces. So we went through all this. And now the next bit here is called fillet surfaces. It's a bit misleading because if you click on this triangle below, you can see there's a lot of other stuff in here. And it's now called surface tools, which is the same as here. So we had the same uh, kind of issue back then when we looked at curves, where we looked at the, the curve tools and suddenly we realized actually the curve tools also here. So we can, we can open this or we just close that and open this, which is basically the same. This is basically similar, the similar stuff. So obviously if you want to, uh, trim something then or fill it something that we need uh, surfaces so how we can create a surface that, that's why it's very good to have this here so we within the surface tools we actually have on the side you have surface creation tools which is very handy so we can uh, for example do this and we create a vertical one somewhere here Yeah, that was not good. Anyway, so so the first tool here you can either type fillet. So so if you type fillet, you get all these different options here: fillet edge, fillet surface. Fillet surface works with separate surfaces. It doesn't work with a solid, for example. That would be a different uh, command. But here. Yeah, you can use the fillet surface and then you can just choose. It has a the value that should be actually on one. The default is one, one meter in that case. And you always need to check if that would work with your model because if you're, so this is 40 meters, so, so this shouldn't be a problem. It's actually a bit big, but let's, um, let's just use that. And I will make it bigger then in that case. So I put the radius on, let's say, 
five, five meter. So then you can know you can um, play with these values here. Extend trim either yes no. There's a there's the blend type um, which could be interesting, but we will just use the uh, default setting. And then it asked me to select first two fish and then the second one. Didn't work. Don't know why. Why it didn't work. I'm not close enough. Yeah, now it worked. It was too far away, these uh, surfaces. That should also actually work if uh, the surfaces are overlapping. Let's try that. It works Th that's pretty cool because that means uh, yeah you can then trim automatically trim uh, overlapping surfaces that could also work if for example my radius is then zero let's try that so I, I repeat the same command fill surface and then I type radius zero and I can just trim these surfaces like that pretty good so if you don't want to have fill it but you want to trim them then you could do it like this extending the next one extending surfaces this is pretty handy if you want to trim something in a certain way there's uh, there's one situation where I, I, I used this quite a lot in the past so so yeah for example you have uh, a road and in 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 plan view the road looks like this but in reality it's not a road it's a ramp so it's actually a ramp down. Now the problem is, so how do you model this? So if, for example, now if uh, of, the, the, of course there are different ways to model that, but so it's a, it's it's a ramp. They go starts here and ends here, and here's zero, and here is um, I don't know three meters tall. Then I would put three meters as my maximum. Or let's make it four, so it's a bit steeper. So now if I want to trim that with one surface, then it's actually not that um, easy to create that surface with, with which I want to trim it with. So you could do this, so you can go here and create a surface, but the surface is not overlapping everywhere. And there, the tool extend surface becomes very, very useful. So then you can extend surfaces, you can trim this, you can use this, and then select an edge, and then it lets you pull it out. That means the, the position of the bit I drew before stays exactly the same, it just extends the edge outwards. And now, I probably have the problem that it still doesn't cut because it's it might not understand, it might not sit exactly here on that corner and also here so I can also extend the upper and the lower bit and this is actually nice in Rhino 7 that it lets you pull it directly that is that was different in the previous versions and then I can trim that I can cut this off I can say here uh, Oh, oh, sorry. Then I have this and then I can use the trim function again and trim this out here and then I have this surface and I can join that here and I have my ramp. actually a good question what's happening if this is not a line if this is not parallel let's just try it let's see how, how what happens so same procedure it just determines not the radius but the the distance from the edge of the surface to the inside I, I'm not sure if it's a good way to describe it but let's let if you see it then you know what I mean so we can take this and yeah it actually did a pretty good job it's it kept um, the length let's check the length here what's the length here 
is 1.5 but basically what it does it cuts uh, so if I, I would extend this now here then you will see it's one meter ish because of course it's not entirely parallel but that but basically it cuts back one meter in that direction and one meter down and that and then inserts that uh, surface the next tool in line is a variable radius fillet and here we have two options actually very very variable radius surface blend and various radius surface fillet let's try the different options so the first option is the, the fillet let's use the radius again oh this time we need to intersect so we need to intersect okay and now you can adjust the radius that's pretty cool and of course it will have a maximum depending on your surface size but yeah let's try this it didn't trim it off that's a bit annoying so let's try that again trim and join that's what i wanted so you can turn it on uh, i will not do that now it's just you can of course then always trim these surfaces with the one you created so you can do this and that creates the same thing at the end variable fillet cool very cool so yeah you see there's a lot of other options so if i again if i go back let's go back there are a lot of a lot of options here um, add handle Th that means that you can actually um, not just have a continuous or linear change of, of the radius but you can have a, a, a different you can add more radii into here so let's for example do this and then I can add one here for example and this is done I can confirm it and change that radius to smaller for example now we have a con we have a linear kind of change of radius to that one and then it becomes bigger again of course i didn't want that again so i'll do it again here here bigger adding a handler a handle and make this small and now i I use this option here trim and join and now it should actually yes so cool that's pretty cool that's I like that I, I'm not sure if that was already available in Rhino 6 I can't remember I, I don't think so but yeah that's uh, very handy um, and the same works with the chamfer it's the same 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 story let's go back we can it might need to overlap also I'm not sure which uh, probably so yeah set the first of two intersecting surfaces for variable radius oh yeah no sorry we forgot something the variable radius surface blend let's check that out i'm not sure i haven't not sure if there's any difference i'll do the same it's this is interesting i'm not sure why 
So now what's very handy is of course our help help uh, tab. Let's go to the help tab and let's see what it suggests. So if I cl right click here, variable blend of surface. Not 100% sure. I, I don't see a difference. If, if you understand the difference, let me know. Okay, variable chamfer. So I, I guess it's the same thing here. Um, chamfer distance one, yeah, that we discussed it before. So this is the basic uh, start distance. You can choose these and then we can change here the radius or the, the distance. As actually now you can see it nicely that how it works so it basically pushes one meter the distance back and down and um, can add a handler a handle and make this bigger trim and join yes preview oh let's do a preview there's a preview option hey and that's interesting that is very interesting it actually creates a curve. I expected a line here, so I ex expected that this is cut in it. That's, uh, yeah, learn something new. That's pretty interesting. I expected that there's a straight line between these different handles. But yeah, that's how it is. Okay, another one, last one, the blend surface. That's also very cool. So for example, you have, and we saw that already with the curves, really. Let's have something like this, and then we have another another curve. Ah, another surface here. And now we want to blend these two together. And we did that with the curves already. Um, blend surfaces, select edge and edge, and then now you can choose, and now we see, okay, there's it's flipped. There's a bit of a problem. So if you have this problem where this side wants to join with that side. Now it worked. I don't know what, exactly why. But uh, I guess now because they're the same. I'm not sure why why it didn't work before. But yeah, it's always a matter of like play, playing around anyway. And then now you have... Now you, it's a... Uh, interior shapes. And now you see, of course, like a preview of the of the result and you can then choose the curvature or modify this here it's also a very interesting option here because it, it doesn't have to be parallel so these these uh, surfaces don't have to be parallel let's let's try that actually uh, i want to rotate that a bit Uh, know what's happening also want to push it back a bit and then we can change these um, control points and we can also change them manually. It's actually it's very similar to what we did with the curves. And then you have these different options. So same with so this could be just like this. That's that's a way to do it. Tangent. And you can choose that for each side, which is also pretty handy. So if you if you only want to basically extend your surface on one side and then have a corner to the next surface that's also a pretty cool option a lot of interesting ways and of course there's another way if so, in, so that could be also like this right so it doesn't have to it doesn't have to be at all parallel that's just so I just need to find a way to kind of connect these you can basically try all kinds of options here interesting stuff okay i think that's that's it for 
for this tutorial and uh, yeah let's see you hopefully see you next time stay tuned good evening arrivederci <laughs>